good morning. I'm really excited for today's projects. There are several things I want to do. First off, I want to show you the root cellar um, and share our plans for that area. Second, uh, we got a load in from Henry Studio yesterday. We got everything pretty much unpacked, but not placed in the garden yet. So I just want to give you a little tour of those things. Um, third, I want to get a couple of our fountains up and running. And then the very last thing may or may not happen. It's just going to kind of have to work in around possible rainstorms. So it's supposed to rain here this morning for a little while and then again this afternoon. So basically when we cleaned out our potting shed, um, all the junk that was in there, moved into a pile into the barn. So I need to kind of go through that, organize it. Um, and that's a perfect project to do under cover when it's raining. So let's talk about the root cellar first. And I have to say, I was hoping to do a grand reveal video. That's why we haven't said anything up to this point. We were hoping to show you from root cellar to finished product, what was going on all in one video, all in one fell swoop, but it's just not working out that way, mostly due to the weather. We've had a ton of rain and wind and it's just kind of putting everybody behind schedule a little bit. And it's honestly not as much fun not to bring you guys along for every single step. It's been really hard to kind of like keep it under wraps. We did get footage though of when the root cellar was removed and filled in. So Aaron will probably pop that in the video here um, so you guys can see it. was all filled in I just enjoyed looking at it just blank for a few days like not seeing that big old random mound out in the garden uh, and now that it's gone we are preparing for chickens <laughs> yep we are adding chickens to our property this year I have to say I am so excited about it you can see that the exterior run has been started it's not finished yet we have a lot to do yet um, and a lot to do inside. So let me turn the camera around and kind of explain the whole area. So here's what it looks like right now. There's still a lot of work yet to be done. You can see the line where the root cellar was and then it extended over like right here and then there was the door that led down into it. Um, the concrete here extended a little bit on the top and then it kind of came all the way out and down. I'm sure I have a picture of that. But they cut it off flush with the ground, which is perfect. It would have been a whole lot of work to um, try to get that out. Plus it's attached to the foundation. So we've just thought it best to leave it, which this is gonna be planting area anyway. So it's totally fine. The beams have been set. This one has yet to be painted, but this is a 10 by 16 run, which I think is perfect. I'm just starting with 10 chickens. So this is plenty of space. In fact, I just ordered the chickens last night and they will be here in just a couple of weeks. So we have a lot to do in two weeks, but there will be a door right here that leads into the exterior run. And I want to do some kind of an X detail like we have on our greenhouse and on our dumpster enclosure, just to kind of tie everything together. Um, there will be a door, like a full-size human door right here. So we've got to cut the building and frame in a door and then there will be a chicken-sized door at the bottom. So I can leave the big door shut and then just open the chicken door so they can go in and out. And then let's just go inside. I'll give you a little look at what's going on. Oh, don't you just love the look of the inside of old buildings? I just think it's so neat looking. But right here, so there are still stairs. Like if you were to dig this up, if somebody digs it up one day, they're gonna wonder what in the world. But the stairs are there. This has just been filled in with uh, dirt and road mix. And they're going to uh, continue the concrete floor right here. So they'll lay a concrete floor and also patch this area here. There was a shelf that went from one side all the way to the other. And it was just full of my stuff. It looks like it's getting dark all of a sudden. Okay, there we go. Um, so we had that removed because, you know, the door will be here and it'll open this way to take up the least amount of space. And then I'm going to be putting nesting boxes in right here. I did have them leave this shelf though, because it's super sturdy and I thought it'd be a good place to put like buckets of feed and stuff up off the ground. We do have electricity, which is very nice. We're going to have it run over here so that I can drop a heat lamp down like in the winter time. And we're also going to, let me flip around. Isn't that a neat old window? It still opens and shuts really easy too. We're also going to have electric brought up here so I can have a light right outside the door. And kind of a neat thing that I never realized until I got all of my junk out of here, there is a faucet. 
So there's a pipe that leads to somewhere outside. I don't know where, it's not working obviously, but I would love to try to troubleshoot this and get it working because how nice would it be to have running water in here. I think I'm most excited to see Benjamin's reaction to the chickens. I think he's gonna love it because he loves to go down to the garden center and visit with Phyllis. I've showed you um, Phyllis before. She's a white silky, super friendly, and he loves to get in her enclosure and feed her things. Good boy. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the fascia because we are gonna change that too. So as we do projects around the property, we are going to be changing everything over to where it's more unified. So we are going to paint the potting shed white. It'll have black accents, so it'll have black shutters, just like the house. So let me swing over. See the house is white with black shutters and we kind of want everything to feel like feel like everything belongs here. So we'll get rid of the potting shed sign. There'll be a light that comes over the door, black shutters here, white building. I'm not sure if I'm gonna start with a white door. We might end up going a different color on that. And then the white run on the exterior door here will have black hardware. Uh, and then I'm just gonna plant this whole thing up. So you can see I kind of made a line with my foot to show you where the planting area is going to be. Since there's a door here, the flower bed will start at this beam. It'll kind of come out and then curve kind of gently right back into this concrete pad right there. I'm also going to be planting four climbing roses. Um, so I'm going to plant one here on the other side of the run here and then a couple on the back. And I want them just to kind of ramble up over the enclosure and provide a little extra protection. There is a huge elm tree up above it, so it gets shade for a good portion of the day. And then if I turn around here, there's an ash tree right behind me that helps out in the late afternoon. So that is what's going on with the potting shed and root cellar area. I'm just so excited about it. I think it's gonna bring just a whole new uh, feeling to our property, it'll bring life. Um, you know, Benjamin has brought so much life to our household and now I wanna start adding in some animals. I've always been an, a huge animal lover. I grew up on a small farm with cows and um, chickens and dogs, cats, ducks, bunnies. I mean, we just had a ton of different things going on all the time and I loved it. And I really want Benjamin to have that kind of childhood, those kind of memories as well. So from now on, I'm gonna be showing you guys everything that's happening with this area as it happens. And we're only a couple weeks out from getting the chickens, so we really have to hurry. Um, so let's move over to the barn area. That's where all the Henry Studio stuff is. You guys might remember a few of the pieces we put up from Henry Studio last year in our garden. Um, the Grand Kensington three-tier fountain was like the most amazing addition to our garden. We put it in the triangle garden out kind of by our driveway where there's boxwood hedges and it's just the perfect look and uh, like it gives the right feel to that area. It's the right scale. Um, I also put the weathered bird bath in an area kind of close to our house where we planted tough stuff, aha hydrangeas around it. And it's perfect. I actually see the pigeons in it all the time and the, the local cat life also likes to partake of the water in that bird bath. Um, and then we also put up the leaf motif urns and pedestals where I put the obelisks in there. We did some like holiday greens. Um, I planted them up lemon coral sedum last year. They were like perfection and right now I have lettuce planted in them and it looks really pretty. But here are a few of the new pieces. So these are called the giant classico palm pots and these are huge and they weigh a lot of pounds, like 366 pounds a piece. And we lucked out because we have some guys here um, starting to work on our brick path on the west side of the house. Um, nothing to show over there yet. We will show you as that project happens as well. But they happen to have some big equipment here. So they helped us unload all of these big pieces um, from the truck yesterday. So I'm very thankful for that. But look at how thick these are. I mean, they're just absolutely massive. And I've got some spots where I want to put these, which we will show you in uh, videos here in the near future. But isn't the detail on these just absolutely beautiful? Look at that. I love it, so fancy. And the next piece is a big bird bath. And I actually asked Erin to come out and help me lift the top onto the base. The base is already placed out in the garden. Ah, there he is. Ready to move a bird bath? Sure. While we're in here, there's the top of the bird bath. Look at this. Oh, this is the Grand Acanthus bird bath. There's also a couple other pieces. So these are the Capri Avanti urns. We just popped them in here until we're ready to plant them uh, and place them out in the garden. But I love the clean lines. I think these are really neat looking. 
And then also, we've got a couple of benches. Here's the legs, classic, with the lions. And then the tops are right here. <laughs> so not much detail to see there yet. Oh, this is the bottom part anyway. Yeah, it's the bottom, but they've got some, I don't know if you can see the scalloping. There is some detail on the edges right there. So let's lift this beast. Easy. So we got it loaded up in this cart. And you guys, we got this cart last year from Gorilla Carts. Mm -hmm. And it is a nice cart to have around. We've used it a ton because it holds a lot of weight and those wheels are perfect for gravel. It also has a dump feature, right? Yeah. So you can dump the, and I think we did that with the sod last year, remember? Uh oh. We're good. Whoop. It's fine. It's settled. <laughs> So we just lifted a small amount of sod last year, but it was really heavy. It was to plant all five of those red point maples on the side of our house. Um, and we used this cart because we could put the rolls of sod in here. And then we took it out where we kind of put our extra sod and we were able to use the dump feature, which made it so handy. I'm not sure that you're gonna be able to get that in there, Aaron. Can we just leave it out here? Prove me wrong. So this is the base, look at that. That is a beautiful base. Like I could just have the base and put like a, a pot with some flowers in it, that'd be pretty too. Yes. But let me just explain really quick. I've got five Mary Rose, David Austin roses. So one, two, three, four, five, kind of planted in this drift. So a really pretty pink double rose with a smoke bush in the back, big tall purple delphiniums, a drift of blue fescue grass that has a bunch of dang oak leaves around it. Those oak leaves are the worst. Yes? I agree. Yes. <laughs> and then I have um, some lupins and summerific berry awesome hibiscus, some appletini hookera, and some cat's pajamas, I think, um, nepeta. It's gonna be a gorgeous area. So it fit perfectly. And I wish everything was a little further along so you could really see how this area is gonna fill in. Uh, we still have yet to do a little cleanup and then mulch this area, which will really like dramatically change the look. Um, but I do have a few more things to pop in here. Like I've got Pagan's Purple Delphinium right in here. I had three. Two of them are coming back, one of them better than the other. This one did not make it. So I'm gonna order like probably eight more and really deck this whole section out with the delphinium. So I have really tall spiky purple with the pink layer next, and then we've got our grass layer and our nepeta right in here. The only other spot I feel like I could use a little something would be kind of intermixed maybe right in the back of these roses because if you look from this angle, I mean the roses will grow and fill in, but I'd like to have a little bit more purple. So maybe some meteor shower verbena. I think that would look nice. So those are the Henry pieces we got uh, and I'm super excited to get them all placed in the garden. This is the only one that we're gonna actually place today but I just wanted to show you the other pieces. Um, we do have plans for those spots but we're not quite ready to place them quite yet. We wanna make sure we've got the irrigation um, run proper and the plants ready and that sort of thing. Um, we also did get one other fountain from Henry um, but we've got it all tarped up and it's got a bunch of cinder blocks holding the tarp back. I really don't wanna take it all off. We just wanted to protect it from any weather but we're gonna be using it in a project not even at our house. It's um, somewhere else, so you guys will see that fountain later on. Uh, anyway, I was just so excited about it, I wanted to share. All right, how do I get this cart out of here? Aaron got it snaked in here somehow. That opening's too small. And there are the piles of burlap that the concrete came wrapped in. So we still have to go through this pile and get it all neatly stacked. The landscaper who is here actually starting work on our brick path um, needs the burlap sack. So he's gonna take all of those with him, which is awesome. And you know, it looks like the guys that were working on it left. Maybe they went on a supply run, but I'm gonna just show you the area a little bit. Nothing's really going on quite yet in terms of brick laying. All right, so you can see the driveway. Um, this is what they're working on first. So they excavated this whole area yesterday that lines the driveway and they leveled the whole thing. Um, and they are going to line the driveway with a double row of brick on both sides. So they're ready to lay brick here and then almost ready to lay brick right here. It's such an awkward thing because this fence right here 
is not straight. It kind of comes out from the house at an angle. So if we were to follow it, it would eventually start cutting into the driveway. So like when I planted this boxwood hedge, we measured from the house because I knew the fence can be changed, but the house is not going anywhere. So I want everything to be lined up straight. And that's what we're doing with the brick as well. So a little bit of activity is going on. It feels like everybody is getting ready just this week to get everything done. I need to grab a brush to clean out the fountain, but oh my word, look at this pile. This is all the stuff that came out of the potting shed. Um, and we were in such a hurry, we just piled it in here. So now I need to spend some time sorting it out uh, because I do not like having disarray like this. Not my favorite thing. All right, so this is the first fountain I'm gonna work on today. Um, first thing I need to do is just clean it up a little bit. I always put burlap in them through the winter um, just because if we get moisture, um, this will collect the moisture and this will freeze rather than the moisture settling at the bottom and freezing to the concrete. It always helps out quite a lot. And then the brush right here is to brush off all of this stuff. So that is the first step. All right, it's looking pretty good. I got it clean. I like to use this small brush because it gets into all of the cracks and stuff pretty well. And then you can see all of the beautiful detail. I did leave my pump in here over the course of the winter. I usually just wrap it in a piece of burlap. But I apologize if you guys can hear the lawnmower. The grass is being cut right now and projects must go on. So anyway, I think I'm gonna ask Erin to come back out here real quick and help me level up the fountain because it's kind of, let me show you, it's sinking a little bit and I'm having to tiptoe around tulips just look at them there are 600 or so tulips in here that are in the pink purple and burgundy family and they just came up beautifully i'm so excited but you can see that the fountain leans slightly forward i did not create a proper base for this at the very least you should dig out around where you want the base of your fountain to sit and then put a nice good layer of like crushed gravel there um, so that it has something kind of level to sit on and I did not do this here I just plunked it right on top of the soil this flower bed has kind of a natural curve down anyway but I was just so um, I was so anxious to get it set up that I skipped that step which I kind of regret I could fix it at this point but I think today we'll just kind of stick something underneath it level it up a little bit get it running and then when I have more time later on maybe we'll drain it and address that problem plus I really don't wanna do a whole lot while the tulips are at this stage. I kinda of wanna wait until they're done. So what I'm thinking is that we can take the top pineapple piece off just to eliminate a little bit of weight. And I brought these rocks over and I thought we could just maybe leave the bowl on and tip that base and just kinda of shove the rocks under the front. Sounds good. You think that'll work all right just for now? Okay, ready? From out here, it looks miles better, Erin. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, so I'll just like kind of mulch around the stones. We used two, you guys, in there. Two stones, and that'll work for now until I can really get in there and fix it. So now we need to get the topper back on. Would you like me to help you with that, Erin? He got it off by himself, but that's heavy. I got it. the muscles looks like the bowl is a little wobbly all right toppers back on and I went ahead I don't know that you can see in here very well but I attached the tubing right here that comes from the very top of the pineapple it runs down and connects to the pump and that's where the water circulates and is pushed up so I'm gonna pop that pump back in there there's a the little sealer piece now I just need to fill it up with water and turn it on and see how it works. I always have to cross my fingers every year about the pumps working. What are you doing, baby? Hi. Hi. Yeah, we're filling up the fountain. Careful, buddy. Careful on that. Yep, there's a step right there. Good boy. You're so smart. Tire. Tire. Mm hmm. Oh, buddy, your fingy is all black. That's where you've been getting your hands all dirty. 
we've discovered the source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, just wipe it on your pants. That's what your mama does. I'm not really sure why the water looks all cloudy, but it clears up really fast. We just recently turned on our water, so that might have something to do with it. But it's looking pretty level. I'm really happy with how that turned out. So now, moment of truth, I'm gonna plug it in. So here's the view from the back side, and we've got it leveled up just enough to where I think it's splashing fairly equally onto both sides, which means the whole pineapple is getting kind of drenched with water and it's not splattering like it kind of was in the beginning. Um, and now it's just a really nice gentle stream, really nice sound, just very gentle, which I love. All right, one down and one more to go today. I technically have four fountains total but I just wanted to get this one set up and then the Grand Kensington three tier set up today I have the Hebe fountain up front which I think is going to be a little bit more intense to set up because I never really got her figured out last year I didn't get the right kit like the right fountain kit with her so I don't have all the right pieces so I'm going to have to try to figure out how to kind of make my own and then I, we do have the big fountain in the back formal garden which I popped a big hole in the base last year and I never got around to fixing it um, I might fix it I might change it into a plant her. I'm not sure yet. I've I've just got to go back out there and really look at it a little closer. I grabbed the stepladder because I have not replaced the very top piece of this fountain since I took it off last fall to winterize it and I am not tall enough to get up there and do it. So we'll see how this goes. And there it is looking beautiful. All right. So there's the top piece that I need to attach back up here or not attach but just set it up there. And then I need to clean out all of the levels. top is on and it is starting to rain a little bit so I'm gonna hurry but we've got a couple of drain holes to make sure that they're plugged there's one in the bottom level and then one in this level here and you can see how tight it is to get down in there let me look around the side here really tight so I'm gonna be using this socket with an extender on it so I can easily see get it down over the socket or the plug and that way I can get it screwed in really tightly. Aaron got me all set up with this last year. So nice to have the right stuff. So now I just need an extension cord because the power cord comes out right at the bottom there and it doesn't quite reach the power outlet. So I'll make my connection with a longer extension cord and then kind of shove that whole thing under the fountain so that no rainwater or extra like irrigation water gets to the connection. And then I need to fill it with water and plug it in and hopefully it all works. I seem to remember we put a little silicone around where the tubing meets the very top of the fountain just so that no water kind of escaped back down the center um, so that it all came over the sides. So I'm gonna turn it on and see how it goes. So that might be something I have to do uh, and then let it dry, so I'm hoping not. Oh, I think the extension cord is in the gazebo, right where it doesn't belong. I already stretched my hose out, I just gotta get it connected. All right, moment of truth. Isn't that so gorgeous? I feel like I could just watch a video of just a fountain running with the sound of water. So wonderful. So check that out. It's falling perfectly, which means it didn't shift during winter time, like it stayed level, but that's always a concern. We did dig out beneath it and it does have a gravel base underneath, but that can shift as well. So I'm really, really pleased. 
so this is where I have it plugged in and I've got a green extension cord that I'll kind of tuck underneath the boxwoods and this will all be mulched as well so it'll be underneath mulch and it goes around the back side of the fountain and then the whole mess of pump cord and extension cord is underneath here which means it's protected from any extra water and then this little piece kind of just slides right in well that didn't take nearly as long as i thought it was going to i mean you guys know how it goes especially with projects like this that you only do once a year things crop up that you're not expecting or like pumps won't work or pieces are missing or whatever today it went really really well and i think that's kind of like a treat to have something go like that because I think like they could sense what I have to do next and that is wading through the mess that is our barn and here's the view from this side quick side note this is where I had to cut out the dead boxwood back here and here I have boxwood sitting in the greenhouse that I just need to get out here and pull these dead ones and get them replaced so I mean it looks bad now it's gonna look a little bit wonky when I do replace them but at least they'll be fresh and green, even if they aren't quite big enough to make the hedge look complete. And that is just how gardening goes. So now I'm gonna address this mess right here. And the stuff in the potting shed, I'm actually kind of happy it's all sitting here in a pile because it forces you, you know, to go through things and see what you actually have on hand. Like, for example, I just bought a bunch of new copper plant tags. And guess what I had in the potting shed? A bunch of copper pla uh, plant tags. So it'll be nice to kind of go through, sift through the things, see what I have, um, what I can utilize, and then what I can give away. So anyway, that is what I'm going to be working on for the next couple of hours. There's a couple of old bottles they found when they took down the root cellar. But like, look at this. This is a bunny planter that I have that I planted up in our old house. Kind of forgot I had it, and it's almost Easter. So I'm gonna have to get that out and put something in it. Looks like lots of steaks, um, harvest guard, which I'm super happy to have this. So this with its spider webs, ooh, hope there's not any spiders in there. Harvest guard, this is the cloth that I used around the boxwoods when I was trimming them because it's super lightweight, but it's strong. Um, so I really use it for a lot of different things. Looks like there's a wall planter. I planted up a couple of years ago, um, saucers, wreath forms, this really cool thing, Corinthian thing, I don't know, it's a stand, not really a planter, because there's a huge hole in the bottom, it's kind of like a pillar. Some uh, rectangular planters, oh, do you guys remember this? I believe in fairies. I did a fairy garden in there. Anyway, a bunch of random stuff. I'm not really sure how much of this I'll actually film because like who wants to see me cleaning out the barn uh, but Aaron said he's gonna come out and join me here in a little while and maybe I'll give you guys a recap when we're all done hey bud did you come out to say hi hi baby I had to stop and take a break so I could plant up this little bunny so cute Well, that looks pretty cute, don't you think? That really sweet buttery yellow primrose next to the purple hyacinth. And it's, of course, very timely with the bunny planter. See, it pays to clean out your junk every once in a while. All right, guys, so I made it through the pile. I'm so happy that that's done, except for those were actually there. <laughs> so I do have a lot more organizing to do yet. But I did end up with a big to give away pile um so anyway that'll feel good just to get those things out um and then i'm gonna work my way through the rest of the barn this time of year it's just so easy to let things pile up because we're just so busy with projects and we're kind of this is the time of year when we kind of amass stuff and plants um, and then we have to work on getting it all organized the whole rest of the year um so i got the pile taken care of and i did make some sense of our tool wall because that gets all in a jumble as well um, and our pot situation so um, the whole area in here that's I don't know if you can see it but it's full of shelving and containers so I kind of worked on that a little bit um, just to kind of reacquaint myself with the things that I had up there that I could use for projects so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video lots of different things going on and that's what it feels like it's it is every single day so anyway I will see you guys in the next video bye